My name is Charles Morrill, and I'm a guide here at Monticello. My name is Grace Klonoski, and I'm a guide at Monticello. I think we should talk about water. <laughs> I mean, when you think of it, why would you build a house on a mountain? That has some real problems to it. Water supply was a constant struggle at Monticello. You're living on a mountaintop, and some years were, were quite dry, and they suffered for it. And so Jefferson was a very good problem solver, and we see this many, many places in the house. But um, as concerns the water problem, um, he settles upon an idea of building cisterns. Yeah, and the cisterns, there are four of them, and there are eight-foot cubes, and uh, there are two of them on either side of the house, on the north and on the south side. They are actually used for storing rainwater. Monticello has these two large terraces. They're actually built to collect rainwater. And as well, the roof of the house itself is also collecting rainwater. It's particularly interesting to watch the way the water collects off the two terraces. Jefferson, he designs um, a zigzag roof. Yeah, well, there's a paneling between the roof joists, if you will. This zigzag design helps with the collection of water, and the water, of course, then goes into gutters, and then to the cisterns. In typical Jefferson fashion, he calculates the average yearly rainfall, and he, he records this in his personal records, and then the, he's also um, measuring the surface area of the roofs and the terraces, and he comes to the conclusion that four eight-foot cube cisterns would allow the house to gather an average of 600 gallons of fresh water per rain day. The cisterns, it turned out that they leaked a good bit. In 1818, he wrote to um, the New York artist and sculptor, William Coffey. He asks for assistance, and Coffey sends Jefferson an extremely detailed document illustrating how to use a Roman cement. And Jefferson teaches his bricklayers how to use this cement. So fast forward to now, the foundation decided it would be a great project to reproduce some of these pumps so that we could actually draw water up from the cisterns. The pump bodies themselves were made by Gaston and Wyatt here in Charlottesville, where I spent many, many years. And while there, I developed an interior mechanism that would allow the pumps to actually work. People actually use them, our gardening staff, using the pumps. You know, someone will come along early in the morning, one of the, uh, the wonderful garden staff, and, and fill up a bucket. 